And here we are. Real Steel. Real Steel. You're at Love Them Knives channel. Real Steel Self. Let's check this knife out. It looked interesting to me. I like the design look of it. Kick it open. This is a Poltergeist Works. Um, I think they got their yeah, moniker on here, their logo. And it's in Nitro V. It's one of these folded steel handles. Uh, like 3.1 inch blade length. So it's not a real big knife. Kicks open nice. Got, yeah, not super drop shutty, but that may change after I disassemble this dog. Although that would be interesting, wouldn't it? How do you disassemble this and get away with it? And do we have bearings on here or not? You know, it looks like washers. So this action for washers ain't too shabby, if that's what it is. Here's a little bit of information from Real Steel on it. The self. S-Y-L-P-H. And I did, yeah, yeah, it was a couple weeks ago. I was looking this up. Some kind of a slender spirit thing. I, I was thinking fairy or some kind of mystical creature. I don't know. So, but I looked up and, and the pronunciations I got were just self. S-Y-L-P-H. I don't know. If that's wrong, then those were the ones I was getting off of, uh, off of the internet, and yeah, uh, wow, handle length is uh, just four inches, so it's 7.36 overall length, 3.15 blade, nitro V drop point, all that kind of thing, poltergeist works, 3.35 and, you know, the nitro bean, you know, in case you're kind of a little, like, really, what is nitro V? I thought it was interesting when he said you could say nitro V is 14C with added vanadium, okay? Um, nitro V modification of well-known, a very, you know, well-known AEBL, AEBL, it gets used a lot by knife makers in the U.S., uh, but then they add small amounts of vanadium and nitrogen to it, and you have nitro V. And they're saying they have very positive alloying effects on steel when you add vanadium and nitrogen, blah, blah, blah. So, there it is. So, I see it very, very similar to a 14C myself. There you go. And I can't remember, what was it, $65? So that, I'm not sure if that's full MSRP or if that's, or if that's a minimum advertised price. So look it up. Uh, also, uh, White Mountain Knives carries real steel brand. And LTK is a discount code for 10% off. So you could always check and compare to see if 65 can be beaten, you know? Uh, but, wow, I mean, strong knife, obviously, right? Because you just bend a piece of steel over, you know? Uh, I think you got her. Uh, and then you've got this liner lock here, and it looks like 20% lock up. There's your drop. And there it is, and it's centered. It's not very heavy. It's not very big, but it's, I keep looking for a flipper tab or something, and there is none. It's an interesting composition, the way they have it here together, really. Um, yeah, 3.35 ounces at 94.9 grams. And what did we say? 7.3 overall length. E seven and a quarter. Am I? No, I, it really it's seven and a quarter, if that. And 18.3 uh, centimeters. All right. So uh, basically 
Man, well, it's a little over. It's like three and an eighth blade. Depends on where you're going to measure it at. But, yeah, seven and a quarter. So almost like a three and a seven, but bigger than that. Uh, so not an unusual uh, length. And then here's your pocket clip. It's deep carry. Looks reversible. Or they wouldn't have this extra hole here, right? And there's that. So I guess you just take the screw out, flip it the other side, and do that. Um, in the hand, I can get all my fingers on here. So unlike some knives that may be a bit smaller than this, uh, and they're out there too. Th this is actually a four finger knife where some of them are not for me. They are more like a three finger knife, but this is truly a four finger knife. And well, will the knife be a knife? Let's grab a piece of paper. And that feels, uh, that feels good. And that's pretty sharp. So whoever did that did a pretty good job of sharpening it up. Somebody was saying something about, oh, yeah, I've seen this, this folded over style on a San Marimu knife. And I go, well, San Marimu, last I knew, it was part of real steel. So, okay. Uh, and also they've done this folded clip on several other models in the past. Um, real steel has. So this is not their first go around with this idea here. And there's no lock rock or blade play on this. Uh, but, you know, this is a thing. You're just going to do your thumb stud deal with this. Uh, either reverse flick it if you want. Or just kick it out with the thumb stud uh, with your thumb. However, there is no flipper tab no front flipper no fuller to flick off or any of that so there it is but it's nice it's got a clean look to it it's slender it's pretty lightweight for being steel that's a lot of steel on there uh and you know pocket clip deep carry you know it'll be pretty discreet carry as well Yeah. Now, hold on, let's back this up. There you go. Now, reverse grip feels good. That works. Uh, where is my balance point on this? Right about there is where my balance point is. Uh, easy to disengage this blade, and it's jimped along here. There it goes. Wow, and it's got jimping up here on top of the blade, so if you want to do this, that kind of thing to get more control or whatever, right? The blade shape, very usable. Nice. And give it a close. Can we go in from the front? No, back, yes. Let's see. And, and it's unscrewing. Whew. Okay, we got that done. What do we got here? Number six, I'm thinking. And on that side as well. Okay. Pull the pocket clip off. And uh, that's interesting. Isn't it? So that sets right down in there. So basically this little hole is where this little tab drops into. Wow. Okay. Okay. So there's the front side. Now... How do we manipulate this whole thing? Let's take a look here. We've got kind of a flat spot, so we must have a captured pivot. 
in this. So we can to pull this pivot out and it is flat so it is captured. Will that pull everything? Yeah, that'll pull this outer casing off. And then we got this inner part and there's your back standoff thing. And here's this right here. And no, they are bearings, aren't they? Yeah, they are bearings. Okay. That's interesting. And what is the best way to exit this with the bearings? And there they are. So here's your bearings right there. There's your blade. The bearings sit into that blade area, so that's probably how you're going to have to put the blade back in, put the bearings in here on both sides and slide it right back in, in there, and then you run this through here and move it to whatever angle, which it takes right there to go through. But you got to do that from the front once you get these two, you know, put together correctly like that so that they'll be lined up and like that. You know what I'm saying? Looks like you have a ceramic detent ball as well but you do have a captured pivot this cutaway here yeah interesting one wrapped on top of the other huh and then a blade in between uh, it's not you know complicated but it might be a little tricky to you know get put back together and so that'll be something to figure on here won't it um you know this little uh, piece here might be the biggest trick of the bunch. <sighs> now, There you go. There's that. So now we got this. Real steel self, yeah, it's uh, probably not one you want to take apart every day, 
but because uh, it's a little funky about how it goes back together. I mean, you got to slide this in. It's got bearings, though. No, no washers. So that explains why it's dropping a lot better than most washer knives I know. So yeah, and it's dropping better now that uh, I've uh, adjusted that pivot a bit. There she is. Uh, this rear piece here has to slide into position through these little slots. Uh, once you get them into this inner frame, you know, and set up. And then, of course, your screws go in there from either side. Not a lot of hardware involved. And there she is. Self. By Real Steel. It's a new release. New release. Check it out. Poltergeist Works Design. We love them knives. So you guys, stay sharp.